Hi, everybody. What's up? I'm DJ Sixsmith. Welcome to Sit Down. The Good Lord Bird coming to Showtime October 4th. David Diggs is here with us. David, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing all right, man. How you doing? I'm doing really well. I, I got to check out the first episode of this one, and I'm super excited about it. You get to play Frederick Douglass, which is an unbelievable responsibility. What was the coolest part of the show for you? Um, I mean, getting to play this version of Frederick Douglass, who the whole story, as you know from the first episode, is told through the eyes of, of this character, Lil Onion, um, who is, uh, who is f freed by the abolitionist John Brown in a, in a like, horribly violent manner and um, sort of joins his, his gang in order to just survive, really. Um, and getting to play the version of Frederick Douglass that is seen through the eyes of like a, an early teenage boy is incredible. Um, it really like humanizes this person who is a hero of mine at, at, and like, and of ours and one of our American heroes. Um, but it allows him to be flawed and allows him to be comical, allows him to, you know, and even Frederick Douglass, when he presented himself in public, was not leaning into the comedy of himself, right? He was, he was very much about promoting the abolitionist movement. So um, to get to show the, the things that are innately humorous about him, I think was a really great, I mean, that's the most fun for me. <laughs> yeah, I would say those are the things that struck a chord with me is that these are flawed people, but there's a lot of humor that's pumped through the show and there's multiple layers to it. So. What surprised you the most once you got on set and really once you started playing this version of Frederick Douglass? Um, I mean, you know, I, I had read McBride's novel, The Good Lord Bird, and it's, it's, it is one of the funniest books I've ever read. So I, ever, I it's like recommended reading for everyone because you'll learn a lot, but it is mostly just an incredible ride. Um, and so uh, I knew that all that was baked into the script. I think the way this crew worked, um, was amazing. Darnell Martin directed the episodes that I'm in and she is phenomenal. Like really, it was different than any other show I've worked on. There was, we rehearsed, we treated things like pieces of theater in a lot of cases. Like everything was, was really locked down. Working with Ethan was unreal. That dude is, I mean, among my favorite actors and um, I've always been a fan of his. So getting to actually work with him and, and sort of try, just try to keep up um, was, was maybe the biggest challenge of the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, he really ratchets it up when it comes to playing his character in John Brown. What are some of the favorite moments that you experienced with him on set? Mostly the, you know, his readiness and willingness to improvise and sort of his insistence on it. Um, when you're in a scene with him, he's, he's alive, you know, he's like, when he dropped into John Brown and John Brown, as you've seen, is like not a, there's, there's a lot there like that. John Brown is living and uh, Ethan really like dialed into it. So as soon as action happened, like you're just, you're just living this scene with Ethan trying to, you know, fighting for the things you want and then cut and he's super mild mannered Ethan Hawk, like sort of looking around being like, that was fun. We didn't do it again. We're not, we didn't. Are we moving on? I don't know. What'd you think? Did you like it? Like it, it was so, it was such an inclusive experience being like, did you like, do you want to do another one? I don't know. Like I, I had a good time. Like what's, you know. Another thing that's really interesting and I'll finish with this to beat is that whether it's McBride's book being turned into this show or I have Ron Chernow's book, Hamilton over my shoulder here, like it's just amazing the space that we're living in that literature can be turned into an all time great show an all time great limited series. Like what's the coolest part of just playing in today's landscape? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're getting really good at, at making things, <laughs> you know, uh, technology is, is catching up to our imagination's capacity. And, and um, I think there's a real push right now to, at least that I've seen as a, in the space as a producer to sort of honor the texts when you're, when you're producing them, which is important to me. I, I like reading and I'm, I'm, I'm big on novels. And I think like, what makes me happy right now in the way that I'm working in the landscape is like the things I'm working on are really conscious of trying to honor the spirit of the of the source material, which is it is really it feels like a change sometimes sometimes you want source material just to get through the easy version of the story and you're going to change it into something that is more like 
bigger feels like a bigger budget event or feel or has like you know all the bells and whistles that we used to think we needed to get people attracted to a story but there's so much content out now that like i think people are really dialing into the story again um and the and the meetings and the feeling that you get from watching something the like emotional ride especially because so many of us are inside just needing ways to connect and ways to release so i, I think it it is good for for television and for movies in a lot of ways. Yeah, amen to that. You got Frederick Douglass, Thomas Jefferson, not a bad combo, man. Really appreciate the time. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, man.